Hey guys, I haven't shown you a master game in a while, so I thought I would share one that I studied recently with a student and one that I thought was a very nice example. And it is uh, Siegbert Tarash versus Van Sheev from Leipzig 1894. So Tarash is playing the white pieces and he started out with D4, D5, C4, and E6. The Queen's Gambit declined which was, of course, played very often back then. Knight to c3, knight to f6, knight to f3, and bishop to e7. Uh, this is all very standard, so I'm kind of uh, going through kind of quickly with the opening here. Uh, bishop to f4, c6, e3, knight, B T, knight b d7. Again, of course, everything is pretty standard here. Uh, h3, so part of the idea here is to prevent this knight from hopping here, but also to give this bishop place to go later. And here was the first uh, inaccuracy of the game. And uh, Tarash goes on to say that this is the losing move of the game, but I don't know if uh, I would go quite so far to say that. And he plays knight to e4. Now, uh, why is this bad? Well, it's again, it's not horrible. But uh, as we'll see in the game, after knight takes e4, d takes e4, uh, this e-pawn becomes a target for white. And that was Tarash's point. Uh, instead, black could have continued with his development with castles. And then after uh, natural moves like rook c1, and now maybe even playing knight to e4 and bishop to d3, uh, you could play something like f5 going into a stone wall. Here, if knight takes e4, he takes e4, knight to d2. Uh, the difference here in this position is that, well, there's a couple couple reasons here. Uh, f5 is probably effective here. And we'll see in the game that that works as well. But um, here, the evaluation is probably about even. And this pawn uh, can become a target, but it's also cramping uh, White's game here as well. So instead of knight to e4, castling maybe it would have been a little better. But instead here, it's uh, again, it's not not totally a losing move. But we'll see here that the ideas behind uh, Tarash's attack um, show us why maybe this wasn't the best move. D takes e4, knight to d2. And then here, black plays bishop to b4. And the idea here is to pin this knight so that it can't take this pawn. So really just trying to save the pawn. Uh, instead, black could have done a couple things. I think he could have castled here. And then after knight takes e4, played something provocative like e5. And basically, or even queen to a5 check with the idea that after... Knight to c5, now five, um, opening up a little bit for these pieces. And yes, it is sacrificing a pawn, but as we'll see in the game, uh, the dark square bishop is not quite as effective where it is. The other option, which we've already mentioned, is f5. And I don't think this is so bad either. The idea here with the king in the center, we could play bishop to e2, and then. Uh, let's say black castles now, white castles, and after, say, c5, which would be some uh, type of break, now we can entertain the ideas that we see in the game here with f3, for example, starting to undermine these pawns. But again, this would have been better than what happened in the game. Instead, bishop to b5, kind of a waste of time. So... Something that I've been noticing in my games, and we saw this in a game I played recently, is that um, the dichotomy of material and time is one that we need to balance. I think a lot of times intermediate and and uh, getting players overvalue material over time, but in this particular case and in a lot of our games, sometimes taking that extra move to develop or get our king to safety might be worth even a pawn. Okay, after bishop to b4, 
a3 was played, and bishop takes d2 check, queen takes d2. Now, part of what we're going to see here is that dark square bishop, uh, not just only was it a good bishop, but also it could have been protecting some of these dark squares, as we'll see soon. Okay, black castles. Queen to c2, of course, attacking the pawn, and now f5. Bishop to d6 is played. Here, I'm not sure if it's um, quite necessary, but maybe in a way uh, it gets this rook off of the f file. At rook to e8, and then now white castles this way. So the idea is clear. He's going to be attacking on the king side. Knight to f6. Now the queen is attacking the bishop. So then the bishop goes to e5. Bishop to d7. And here was a very important move in the game, f3. Okay, so in the game. So here white takes. What can be done instead is, I think taking kind of lets white have his way, as we'll see. But instead, maybe he could have started to attack on the queen side. For example, b5, and even after f takes e4, we can take back with the knight. Now this knight is uh, pretty strong here. Uh, if we try to attack it with bishop to d3, we could just leave it there. Or we could even, say, bring it back here to f7 to attack this bishop. So just gives a little more flexibility. But what happens in the game is, let's go back here, is e takes f3. And this allows white to open the g file, which was basically what white wanted all along. And now b5 is played. And what do you think the next move uh, that should be played here? White starts his attack down the g file with rook to g1. Okay, and after rook to f8, now starting to think defensively, rook to d2. Where is that rook headed? Of course, it's headed to g. Rook to f7, so that's why the uh, bishop came, or the rook came along here. And now rook uh, d to g2. So now we see that we are starting to aim at this g7 square. Okay, e5. Black is trying to get counterplay on the queen side, but the problem is that now it's too powerful. Uh, queen to f2. Now c5, I, I was wondering this. Of course, we don't want to take here because this opens up the c file. but. I was thinking something like c5 might be good because here it's very difficult now to play something like b4. We probably have to play a5, a4 first to lock uh, this pawn in place and then play b5. But you see here with the pawn on c5, this bishop is not going to have any activity at all. So I thought that could have been played, but uh, Tarash was very direct here. Uh, queen to f2, and the idea here it's going to come over to the king side. Uh, knight to e8. And again, I think that um, c5 could have been played here, but instead, um, white plays again very directly. And the idea behind this move is sort of subtle, but basically it's blocking this queen so that we can bring our queen. In. Okay, queen to e7, and then queen to h4. See how we're, uh, the rook is allowing that queen. Okay, knight to f6. Now here, what happens if h6? H, uh, well, the problem here is that this pawn is pinned, so we can just take it. So there's really no way the black can contest here. Knight to f6 is played. Trying to block up the king side. And we to h6. This is the... Such a beautiful move here because they have so much coming in here on this g7 square. I think uh, Vukovic would have called it a focal point. Rook to a7. And here, bishop to d6. This is the uh, master stroke. Uh, deflecting this queen away from defending the g7 pawn. Let's see what happens next. 
Queen takes d6, rook takes g7, check. Now, if rook takes g7, of course, queen takes g7 is mate. So the king went to f8. And here, just grab the pawn. Now threatening to come here to h8. King to e7. And we're going to take this. And here, if get king takes f7, then rook takes rook to g7. Actually, this is what happened in the game. King to e8. And queen takes f6 is more accurate than uh, queen to h8 check because of here we have queen takes or I'm sorry, queen to f8 blocking queen here. So let's just go over those last couple moves. Rook to h7, go back here, rook to h, takes h7 check, king to e7, queen takes f7 check, king takes f7, rook to g7 check, king to e8, and here queen takes f6 is move here with this threat here of uh, rook to g7 check, which is here if well let me just take a look here uh, for example if something like this then let me just look here we can play well, we can play a lot of things we can play queen six check king takes after uh king to d8 then we just pin the queen and win hey guys i uh, hope you enjoyed that video i thought that was a uh, fun game. I uh, actually uh, got it out of my book here, The Most Instructive Games of Chess Ever Played. I'll put the uh, Amazon link down below if you, in case you want to check it out. I think it's a great book for uh, beginners and intermediate players alike. Uh, a lot of beautiful games with some of the early masters, including a lot of the world champions, Blanca, Leakin, Enoch, Trojan. They all uh, make an appearance in that book by Irving uh, Chernev. But in any case, this game I thought was a great example of how to focus all of your forces against a target, in this case, the G7 square and the Black King. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, check out my newsletter over here. I've um, got a, a playlist with other uh, classic master games that you can check out. And uh, appreciate you guys watching. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.